Okay, my outstanding friends, this just came in this morning. A scientist proposed a neutrino laser. Well, what if it's already been done and dismissed, which is the case? I will show you. So why would you need a neutrino laser? Well, it could help us probe the mysteries of the universe. What is the universe made of? What is life made out of? How, how did life even start? Neutrinos are the most abundant particles that have mass. Basically, as far as I'm concerned, they almost have all the mass there is. And the white particles have all the energy, basically. And the black ones just have the mass. They say cruel irony, they're extremely elusive, earning them the term ghost particles. They say there's trillions of them zipping through your body any given moment. I don't agree with that. They interact with matter so rarely that they're almost impossible to study. They're impossible to study because they don't understand dipole electron flow theory. They're not passing through you. They're bouncing into you along with the light particles that are coming at you. They're bumping into your magnetic fields just as boing, and it gives you off as a light signature that people can see. And yeah, here he is. If there's no light, there's, there's no boing. Now, they're talking about a neutrino laser. Well, what is a neutrino? It's the smallest particle that exists. All right, he's saying that being able to detect and study neutrinos reliably could potentially help us solve major mysteries, including dark matter, what it is, and why antimatter didn't wipe out the universe as we know it. They, they don't understand antimatter, and they, they don't have any clue what dark matter is. And I, I, it, dipole flood solves the whole thing. It's two pieces put together. Neutrinos tend to see not to interact with matter, which is not true could also be put to good use for communications. Anyway, I don't care about that. First step would be to check if it's possible to actually build a neutrino laser. We did this 10 years ago. Yes, it is possible. Okay, this is very simple. What is light made of? I say it's made out of neutrinos. Well, what are neutrinos? They're fundamental particles. They're the elementary, means the tiniest little bits and pieces that interact by, with the weak force and gravity. Ghostly nature, they interact very weakly with matter, meaning they can pass through vast amounts of material without being detected. I disagree with that. There are three types of neutrinos. There's the electron neutrino, yes, that's the glowy one, has no mass. The muon neutrino, yes, that's the black one, has all the mass never changes size. The electron one can get huge and create showers. And the tau neutrinos are, I believe, the ones that are in the midst of not quite being neutrinos. They're like a half a neutrino, which would be considered a, a, a dipole electron. I, I think that's what they must be talking about, which is both of these two together, tied together, is the tau. Now, as you know, I have a different opinion to the whole thing than, than they do. They're saying this is antimatter, the black one. No, it isn't. That is the substance of everything, is the matter. And that's what creates gravity. It's dark matter. It's the muon. It's attached to which is not the matter, which is the energy, which is the white one. It has no mass so that I can find. Or when you see an atomic bomb blast go off and the white matter is the outside coating of all matter is coated with the white particles. And that's what bounces off and makes you, you can see light and so forth. When that goes out first, it just burns the house up, vaporizes, it doesn't move it. There's no mass to that. And then behind it comes the matter and pew. So they have this backwards. And they call it a Dirac neutrino. Well, there's all, so they have so many different names now. They got all these, forget about it. There's only these two particles, and it, it's just the opposite. That has no mass. It just is energy. And that has all the mass and never changes the size. 
Now this Majorna, I don't know what that, they could be that, the Tau, no clue. But uh, it's not, it, they're talking about almost like 50-50 of matter and 50-50 of antimatter, so it's not really anything totally separated like what a dipole is. Dipole is totally separate. The black is here, the white is here. It's a total separation, 100% separation. See, this is where they don't get it. They say light is not made of neutrinos. It's made of photons. Well, the photons are made of neutrinos. And they say the photons carry an electromagnetic energy. Yes. Neutrinos are also fundamental particles, but they are matter particles. The two of them together, the white ones, they consider to be photons. Yes, it's part of a photon, but without the black, you have no photon. Photons are the black and the white together. It has to be that way. Otherwise, you have raw white or you have just raw black. See, they consider that to be a photon. Well, it's, it's got all the energy, yes. It does, it creates a lot of energy, it creates the light, yes, no question about that. But it has to be attached to a black one to begin with. When it hits something, it bounces back. What it bounces back is the frequency of how fast it was going, what it's made out of, what it's hitting, the temperatures, all kinds of stuff. But what it bounces back with is a photon like this. So you have two whites attached to two blacks, two Dirac neutrinos back to back, and this is it. Coming through the air going this way. This one's charging up because it's bumping into all these little particles in front of it. This doesn't charge up. It never charges up, it never discharges, it, it's, it doesn't emit, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't reflect, it's dark matter, it doesn't do anything. But there is a little ring around it, which is the color of the, the, the photon. In this case, it, it's, it's the red from this red laser. So what did we do? We did just what they're talking about, a, new, a neutrino laser. All right, we just changed the particle, which that is that particle right there. That's a particle. We stripped the white away from it and let the white go and kept the black back. You see it? It accelerated it. Zzz, well, boom. And it hit so hard that it made it just a gigantic explosion. And a lot of the black backed out and the white just squirted through. And here it is over here. This right here is this right here. You see the black ones? The only reason you see them, they're dark matter, you should never see those. The only reason you see it is because the white is behind it and can't, can't get to you. Same thing over here. They're all over, they're everywhere. The black is everywhere, you just can't see it. It's just unseeable until it gets on top of the white. And this is just very exceptional because right in here, is the electron neutrino showers. Electron neutrino showers. There it is. Electron neutrinos. That's an electron laser. This is a muon neutrino shower and a muon laser. Now, I know we could separate the black from the white too because that also happened right here where the black is pushing the white. So something happened in this venture. Now, Rod Warren did these experiments and an unbelievably fabulous job and I have not had any correspondence with him for years now. So I hope he's all right. And, uh, but I understand not wanting to react to him. But it was like many years we worked together on this and it was very discouraging. But, um, that's the black separated from the white. There's a lot to consider here. This is not a silly thing. It's not silly by any means. And we're talking about a laser. Is it possible? Well, yes, it's done. It's done a long time ago. And again, that's it right there. That's what they wanted to see. And who wanted to see it? These people right here. Fermilab. There's their particle, which is my particle. That's the mass, and they say the same thing, it's all mass. Never change the size. Then you have this one, it gets bigger or smaller, 
no mass. That's these. But they are t attached together as dipoles. And they know this, they've seen this. Because here they are, right here, showing it. Dirac neutrinos. This, that's what they call Dirac neutrinos. Only they got it backwards. This has no mass, and that has all the mass. And this is not a fully formed photon, because only a photon is, is, is fully formed light when it really is bouncing. And you're picking it up as a photon, you're picking up the white part. But to see it, I think it has to be a really serious concussion, which this is. That's a serious concussion. And just before, you don't see it back here. You can't see it back here. As a matter of fact, hold on. This shows it approaching. You see back here, that may be the Majorna. That might be the ones that are not really photons. And then, or even like these up here. Because they are everywhere. They're everywhere, They're everywhere. This is the excited one. This is the accelerated one. That's why we see it glowing way back out here. These are starting to glow because they're being pushed back at. Back here, there is nothing, zero. There's no glow whatsoever back there because there's not enough push back there. But it's, this is where it's banging backwards. That's why these are showing up just like perfect little photons. And we can see the same thing with the green. You just saw the, that the green is here. And they reconcuss way out here. They're much stronger than the red. They just flop them out of the way. But same particle, identical same particle. And, um, you know, it has identical structure, no difference. Well, I'll show it to you. All right, so there's the green. All right, identical to the, to, 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 they're all the same. Same particle. It's just some spin faster than the others. When I say spin, that's what they do. They go forward like this, spinning. And if they spin real fast, they go, and, and it's just powerful, and, but they're just compressed. You can't even tell there's two particles in there. Which you should be able to see the two particles just like you're seeing here. But with the blue, you really can't see them. Uh, well, you can, but it takes a while. Now, the, the red is way out here slow, so easy to see. Green is here. It's a little more stretched between the particles because it's going faster. And uh, the blue is real fast, so, but it does slow down. And that's when you can see there is two particles. And I, I'll show you that right here. Here's where the blue comes in, really rocket ship. It looks like one particle. But it's not. Each one of those dots is two. It's going almost straight because it's going so fast that it's not drifting. Well, now it starts to drift because it's slowing down. You see how it's opening up, opening up, opening up, opening up. And then by the time it gets out here, we can see there's two dots, which are the dipole electrons. And they configure differently for some reason. I don't know why. But this is blue rocket ship fast. Very, very powerful compared to the green and the red. All right, you see how weak the red is compared to the green? This is both of them come at the same time. But the green is the same particle as the blue. Here's the green. Right. Same particle, no difference. And this one's getting ready to flip. It's charging up. And it will flip as the bottom one gets filled up pops, then the front, that one goes to the front and it charges up. It's capacitive reactants. Charge, boom, charge, boom, charge, boom. That's what spins them. Now check this. I showed you the blue. You, there's nothing we really could do with the blue. But Rod did this. Check this out. This is through a piece of glass with the blue. And it comes in just flying. Look at that. That is a lot of energy. It's pushing all of this. These are all 
energy, something in the energy realm. I don't know, I can't explain to you exactly, but they're bang, 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 bang. It's just like Tesla said, it's all vibration and frequency and how fast it's spinning in. The blue is really fast. If this was green, it would be boom, 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 boom. And if it was red, it would be boom, 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 boom. Blue is And the only reason I believe, I'm very pretty sure this was through glass. And uh, he did all kinds of stuff. It was absolutely fabulous. And uh, I wish I could have worked better with him to help him more. But nobody would talk to me, and they still don't. So, but this is the, we found the same particles as Fermi Lab, and I contacted Fermi Lab over ten years ago, twelve years ago. And I showed them all this stuff and what we're doing. We're using CMOS, and and it was rejected, still is. But however, I went to University of Geneva. I told them about this, and they f finally agreed. You could use CMOS, but it can only be done if it was hardened. And they ended up doing that at CERN, hardening the CMOS. And originally, they said, no, you can't do it. It destroys the CMOS. I said, you guys are using big particles. I'm using little ones. Where's my little one here? I got uh, here it is. They're shooting particles like this, hitting them, and boom, big chunks go flying. We started with this. We never get bigger than that. And when they break, they break into light particles, which is what you're getting hit with all the time anyway. These are, you know, if you put your eyeball right down in there, you would probably lose your eyesight. I'm sure there's a ton of energy right at that exact spot. But instantaneously, it reforms back into just normal light particles as the Higgs fields reconstruct. Now, if you could intervene and extract that energy, I think you could do some, make electricity with this. I don't see why not. I'd love to talk to somebody about it, but this has been 10, 12 years now. Nobody's interested. Not yet.